Hi, in this video, we're going to take a look at making a standalone tool using Python, such as an IP subnet calculator. As mentioned, we're making a standalone tool that, because not everything in network engineering is about interacting with the network devices. Usually a network device is the last step, right? You, you're ready to make a change, you know what you're going to change, and you push out that config toward the device. There are other times where you just networking related, but you're not interacting with the devices. So in this section, the main point is actually, you know, the code script itself, it's not as important as the idea behind it. So in this section, what I aim to do is talk about how to write more maintainable code and think about, you know, you provide a better user interface. And in this case, by interface, I don't mean, you know, like a beautiful GUI, some JavaScript, drag and drop, although that could be it, but it's more about how do you how does your program interact with other programs, such as your Python script interacting with other Python scripts? Because at the end of the day, I think as network engineers, because a lot of us, you know, myself included, are new to the developer world. So we tend to just write a function and get it to work. You know, we don't really think about testing. We don't really think about, you know, maintainable code. We don't really think about other surrounding things besides just making it work. So in this case, you know, I wish to, you know, change that mindset a little bit. So for our example, the IP subnet calculator, we try to implement three features. The first one is I will present you with a network and I want to know is my IP address on this network or not. And the second feature is my network part of a bigger network. And the third feature, it might sound a little strange to you, but it will make sense later on when we look at the code is that what is a PTR record of a particular IP address? So let's go and look at the code a little bit. So the first step that I would do, and I think any of us would do is actually go out there and search to see if somebody else had the same problem already made a, a module, wrote some code to address that problem. And lucky for us in Python three, there is an IP address module within the standard library that, you know, just by browsing around a little bit, I think I could use this standard library module and pretty much implement the features that I was looking for. So let's fire up the, the interpreter and see if we could just play around with the, a little bit. And the first is obviously to just import the IP address. And then now I'm creating a network. And by the way, if you wonder about the usage, how I got those particular APIs that I could create a network with, it's all from that documentation that you saw before. So now that I've created a network object, that's, you know, this slash 29 that I could actually create a list of all the hosts that's in this network, right? So I think this would address in my first feature that, you know, to see if a particular IP address is within this uh, network. So the first feature, you know, I'm pretty sure I could just do that. And then the second feature is to see, hey, if my subnet it's overlapping in the bigger network, right? So that would be a true or false uh, statement. So as you could see that, you know, from this, I spun off the net variable as a IPv4 network as slash 29. And this overlaps feature actually allows me to see if this is in within the bigger slash 24. Let's just say like this is two and that's a false, right? So that proves that function actually works. And the third feature that we're looking for is actually to see if the PTR record for a reverse IP address. And like I said, this would make a, a sense a little bit later on. So I think this is where a network engineer writing code, it diverges away from you know, maybe a traditional developer who's been developing code for a while is that by this point, you know, I see all the features that I need and I could actually, you know, write a fairly simple script just line by line by line and achieve what I needed to do. But in order to write a more maintainable code and a faster code, and it's a better code that's being ingested by other people, can we do better? And so that is the question. So let me get out of the interpreter and Let's look at how to write better code. So the first thing that I would do is actually to construct an IP subnet, a calculator object and make sure others could import it and use it as intended. So that's what I did in the subnet calculator version one is basically just, in, you know, initialize the blueprint using the class and having a init function where, you know, I will pass in a network variable that becomes an attribute of this particular object. 
And then I would look at the use case version one just to make sure that you know I could import that module and then I have this network variable and then I will initialize the subnet and then make sure that I could print out that network attribute. So let's take a look. Python 3 use case v1 and sure enough I could do that. And the second step that I would do is actually to build on that and as you could see import the IP address module and this part is pretty much the same except I initialized the network object and this is essentially what I have done what we have done in the interactive section where I'm using the the list of the host and then I'm initializing this IP address that was passed in to see if that was in that list of IP addresses and I will return true if it is and return false if it's not and the second function follows the same logic except it uses the overlap as we've seen interactive prompt. And the third function is what I previously mentioned that was a little bit funky, that it really is trying to illustrate this idea of, you know, previously, if we were to just write a bunch of functions in a Python file, import that as a module, that we could just use it straight out. But if once you declare a using the class, to declare an object you need to in order to use all of these functions that you need to initialize this object and then create an instance of this object but if you want to go back to the old way so just calling that function from the your python module you could use a static method and in this case i mean if you think about it you know printing out an a, a the ptr record of a ip address really has nothing to do with the network so in this case i'm just trying to group this function into this file because it makes no sense to create another file just for these two lines of functions, but I still want to be able to call it straight up. And in the use case file that you will see how it was called differently. So let me exit out and let's look at the use case version two. So in this instance, notice I've imported v2 and I've declared two variables. One is the IP, one is the network. I have initialized an object and then I'm using these two functions where is do do I count is my IP in this particular network? Is this subnet of you know 1.4/30 within my network that I pass through? And then notice how the static method was called is without initializing the object and it was just straight up calling from the module and the class and then the function itself. So let's take a look. And sure enough, that's how it works, and it's working as expected. So in summary, in this video, we saw that how when you're constructing a standalone tools via Python, you want to be mindful of writing more maintainable code and having a better user interface. And with this user interface, I mean, for other programs to interact with either a actual user that's using this tool or for other tools to use your tools. So in this section, we look over network automation using Ansible as well as Paramico. And then we take a look at using direct API calls using NX API as an example. We also look at continuous integration with Jenkins, as well as a standalone tool of IP subnet calculator using Python. In the next section, we're going to go over know your network, monitoring your network with Python. I'll see you there.